What do you know? You actually survived 2020. It's been a long, rough road, but we're finally here. And... Hey, why not make the best of it, so... In terms of the world, yeah, it's kind of sucked a lot. In terms of gaming... It's actually not been that bad of a year in terms of gaming, actually. At least we've had some big hits this year in general. And I figured, why not share my thoughts on maybe my picks for Game of the Year and just some recommendations for you if you're interested. Uh, this list is going to be, just from my experience, games that I played all the way through or almost 100% all the way through. If, if you know what I mean. So, there are some games that I feel like, yeah, if I play them more, maybe I will include them on here. But until I get more, more exposure to them, uh, I don't know if I can really solidify their place. So, they'll be, just be honorable mentions. And even then, there's still some other ones that I would like to play or include, but just haven't had the chance. Uh, there's definitely plenty of that, so... If you're upset that, you know, a game that you're huge on right now isn't on this list, just bear in mind that, hey, maybe I didn't play it, or for whatever other reason, it's just how I feel personally. It doesn't make or devalue your favorite game or whatever any less. It is just coming from me and sharing some thoughts and feelings and hoping that maybe if somebody's looking for something new to play, this might help you a bit. So, without any further ado, get all that out of the way. Let's just go right into it now. And let's start at the bottom of the top five list. And this is one of the titles that I managed to review on this channel. Ghost Runner. Uh, Ghost Runner was not what I expected it to be when I first started playing it. I just... When I heard about it, finally, I saw it as... Oh, cool, something to hold me over until uh, Cyberpunk drops. Alright, I'll give it a go. Didn't know exactly what to expect, but going into it, I was still pleasantly surprised in the end. It's a game where definitely gonna die a lot, but man, it makes you feel like a badass Cyber Ninja when you play. Just running through rooms filled with enemies, puzzles, uh, death-defying traps, and... Uh, all sorts of parkour moves in order to take out your opposition and keep running. Running, dashing along, going into slow motion, grappling along the walls, slicing and dicing anything in your path. That's all part of Ghost Runner's formula. Death is definitely a big part of it, but boy, when you do those runs and you get them just right as you run through that dark, deep, dark uh, cyberpunk world, it's gonna feel awesome. It's going to feel good when you do it successfully, too. It's a game that I definitely recommend giving a shot. It seems like it never really got all the love and attention it deserved. So, yeah, for those of you curious, you can check it out on, I think, PC, PS4, Xbox One, and it'll be getting a next-gen upgrade before long. And maybe Switch, if I remember right. So, there you go. Something that I think just about all platforms can play. And without further ado, let's jump into the next one. Number four, I'm slapping down the Tony Hawk Pro Skater remake. Now, for me, this game just hit on something really special for me. It, it wasn't just a simple nostalgia trip. This was a very lovingly well-crafted return down memory lane and a genuinely great skateboarding game. It, I think it might single-handedly revive the genre that has more or less been kind of dying out in these recent years, and Tony Hawk's series in particular hasn't been doing too well in the more recent entries. From 5 to I think Shred and all that, the ones that use those extra little peripherals, it, it was a series that I feel like probably peaked with Underground 2 and then it slowly began a descent that gradually picked up pace with each new release. But, for those of you interested, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Remake, literally from the ground up, one and two, completely redone, and back better than ever, 
with Create a Skater and a great uh, park editor. Great campaign, free skating online, if that's interesting to you. A little bit of everything, really. There's not really any negatives to say about it, and for those of you also curious, pretty much almost the entire original soundtrack from both of those games back. Uh, plus some new ones, and if nothing's to your fancy, turn on Spotify. So, there you go. If you grew up with Tony Hawk, absolutely re recommend grabbing that game. No hesitation or second thought about it. Do it. Simple as that. Then, next up, Ghost of Tsushima. Um, this and... This choice and my second choice are really button heads together, but I feel like my second choice wound up having a little more of an impact on me. But that doesn't devalue Ghost of Tsushima any less. This game is quite simply a must play. Everything was established so well in the game. The story, the characters, the soundtrack, the world itself and the absolute beauty of it. There's not very many negatives I could say about Ghost of Tsushima, and I really wish I was able to review it. Maybe it'll still come. Who knows, I'll figure it out here in the future, but... Yes, Ghost of Tsushima... Tsushima, Jesus. Is a wonderful game. Uh, it's an incredible journey with very intense combat and plenty of vistas to enjoy through the massive open world. From playing stealthily to going in, doing honorable one-on-one -on -one fights, there's a playstyle there for everybody. And all sorts of little side stories and side missions that are absolutely worth your time and will probably suck you in anyways just because they're so intriguing to go through. There's Ghost of Tsushima definitely is, I think, PlayStation 4's last big huzzah for a generation. They more or less are the ones taking that system out with a loud victory yell, I would say. So if that game sounds up your alley at all, Feudal Japan fighting off uh, Mongols from their invasion of Tsushima, absolutely go for it. Could not recommend it enough. 100%. Now, following up from there, next up at number two, we've got Doom Eternal. This game took what was everything great about 2016 and just kept the ball rolling, in my opinion. It's absolutely incredible. So vicious, so visceral, in your face, non-stop, brutal action, and fun platforming all the way through with that game. Uh, I... Man, I, I don't know what ways Eternal could have improved, honestly. Maybe bridging what actually happened between Doom 2016 and Eternal a little, a little bit more? Because I really struggled to understand what happened from here to here if I'm being quite honest, and I know some codex entries clarify that, but still. Uh, I won't complain, I won't argue, because I know this game is very proud of its... just how it handles its action and violence and gore, everything. Uh, if you loved 2016 at all, get it. If you love Doom at all, in general, get it. If you want incredible, fast, non-stop, heavy metal action with the best soundtrack I've heard in the game in years, get Doom Eternal. There's so few bad things I could say about the game, honestly. Uh, I love all the new little features like jumping from monkey bars in the arenas, the grappling hook on the uh, super shotgun, the new uh, blade and his arm, the shoulder cannon, and his uh, expanded arsenal. All of it was just so rad, and it, it came together in a wonderful product, worthy of a lot of praise and uh, respect, I believe. 
so Doom interests you, go for it. You won't regret it, simply put. Now, before we just jump to number one, let me do some honorable mentions for you. And I'm saying these are honorable mentions because I didn't get to play them all the way through. I didn't get to really put in all the time and uh, progress far enough to really, you know, feel like I can call it one of these games or properly review it. So, instead, this is from what I've played so far of these titles, and I just think that what I have played looks really promising. Or, simply put, I just don't think they quite made it onto the list. So with the first place, I will quickly mention Final Fantasy VII's remake. Uh, didn't play the original growing up, but I finally got to play this remake. It's incredible. I really love the style of combat that they did for this game. Uh, switching from the turn base to this interesting live time action style that they got going on, like with Final Fantasy XV. Really cool. And I enjoyed it far more than I thought I would, and I, I can see the value of the story and everything. That's a remake that, man, they gave it their all, and it shows in every nook and cranny of that game, I believe. So, Final Fantasy VII, definitely an honorable mention, would love to play more. Uh, next up, Yakuza Like a Dragon. Um, I am a huge fan of the Yakuza series, and... Once Zero came out, I finally took the dive in and just started going through the games. I love all the ones I've gotten to play. Still need to fill in the gap between uh, 3 and 5, because I only played a little bit of 3. Haven't even really touched 4 or 5. Beat 6, which I probably should have just waited. And now, we got Like a Dragon, which completely changed up the formula of the series of uh, beat-em-ups into a turn-based RPG. Or JRPG. But, it's awesome. What I've played so far, it, it's awesome. And even the new protagonist, I, I'm finding the liking towards him. He's a pretty cool dude, and I'm excited to see where it goes. I, I'm still fairly early on the game, but it looks so promising. So, so promising. If you're a Yakuza fan and, you know, kind of second-guessing the uh, turn-based thing that they changed it up with, I'd say give it a go. It's still worth it, even if that usually ain't your thing, at least try it. And for those of you who haven't played Yakuza at all, let me just say, please go pick up Zero and go through the series. Incredible, incredible story, and you will fall in love with these characters. And the beat-em-up gameplay is fun and brutal as can be. Man, it'll suck you in once you get into it. That's Yakuza, basically. Then next up, Demon Souls. This is about to get a review dropped. We got everything recorded, it's just a matter of me piecing it together now. Uh, Demon Souls is really incredible, for especially for a remake, and the first true next-gen game for PS5. Uh, basically the only one right now besides Astro's Playroom, but I think this is the one that utilizes the system's power the best, and really shows it off strongly. And, uh, yeah, with Demon Souls, if you played the original at all, I can't imagine you not liking this one as well. The views and everything, the graphics are just it's almost mind-blowing looking at. Really leaves me taking a moment to just kind of stop and gaze around at everything like, wow, this is incredible. This dark, doomed world that you're trying to save, or conquer depending on what you're going for if you've played souls games it's basically still in the same vein as uh the dark souls series uh the only negative i might give it is it's got less combat and movement as compared to those technically and there's a lot of claustrophobic areas that you fight in i've noticed a lot of really tight corridors where wow i can't even swing my sword because I'm right up against both walls and it just b bangs into the wall, so... That's kind of like my only negatives towards the games, but otherwise... I could see why it blew up as it did when it came out. Very, very cool and amazing. And it's another beautifully well done 
and lovingly made remake of a game. Now, that's it for honorable mentions. Again, there's a lot of games I didn't even get to play this year. I, I didn't even know about Hades until the Game Awards. I don't know how I never heard about that, but I only just found out about that at the Game Awards. I wish I could have played Half-Life Alex, but I, I don't know what I'm going to do about VR, because the Oculus situation right now has me really turned off, and that was the one I was about to go for. And can't afford an index, so I, I don't know yet about that. And uh, I think Mafia could use a quick honorable mention, because no one really seemed to give that game any love. It's a really good remake as well. Uh, and it makes me happy to finally experience some of that, but I'm still fairly early on into it. Uh, other than that, I suppose it's worth mentioning. Last of Us 2, yes, I did play it. Um, there's a lot to say on that game. A lot of good and bad. We were supposed to do a review, but every single time I uh, tried getting my friends together, we were going to do a big roundtable review on this because... Uh, it's a game that the original was so close to all of us and really blew us away. And now, here with the second one, I... Oh man, just in the future, I'm gonna come together with my thoughts on that. We're gonna find something to do. It's just still not here yet. That's all I'll say. I'm not gonna bash on the game, just saying that outright. But I'm not gonna blindly praise it either. There's a lot of good and bad about it. A lot of glaring issues and things that it did that makes it worth at least one playthrough. I will simply say that. So, without further ado, I, I probably kept you waiting long enough. What's my game of the year? Well, I just beat it on Monday night, and I... I know I'm probably going to get flack for this, but please hear me out. I'm probably giving it to Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, I'm going to begin the review for it after Demon Souls, but... Man, oh man, I... Uh... Okay, let me get this out of the way. I encountered a, l a lot of animation-related bugs. I think I experienced... 33 crashes in total in my 70 hours of playing it. So that that is pretty serious to have that many crashes. There's a lot of stuff that the game does deserve flack for, but the actual experience of it, the gameplay, the gunplay, the hacking, the stealth, uh, augmenting your character, the soundtrack is incredible. Uh, there's just so much great things I have to say. I was worried that this was going to be a situation again, like we're with uh, Metal Gear Solid 5, for example. Super, super hyped for that. So very hyped when it came out. And while I enjoyed it, I was still just... I felt some tinge of disappointment. Even though I got a lot of great things to say about that game, still some tinge of disappointment. Same for Fallout 4. Hyped it up so much, just to feel a little disappointed with it. Even though I enjoyed what I played. And now... Here we, I am with Cyberpunk, and I've been hyping this up and so excited for it since 2013. And even through everything, I I was pleasantly surprised. It surpassed a lot of expectations. Uh, Night City is the most beautiful, amazing open world I have ever seen in a video game. Simply put. Um, and the story, the characters... By the time the game was over, I had a lump in my throat. I uh, was almost fighting back some tears by the ending. I genuinely was totally invested in my ride through the game. That said, I man, it's gonna be tough to know how to re re rate the game when I do the review, just because those bugs and everything can't go without some sort of. Uh, you know, repercussions. Even though I didn't, ha I never had a single quest break on me. I never had anything more than just silly graphical bugs and crashes at worst. Uh, it's still gonna have to affect the review somehow, I think. But in general, 
yes, I had one on an experience that I'm happy with and I'm probably never going to forget. And I can't wait until the PlayStation 5 upgrade because I'm probably going to do like a follow-up review just specifically for that. But if you're mad at me for saying that, hey, I won't get upset with you. I understand if you were incredibly let down with the game, but it, it's just what it is for me. And it, I couldn't be happier with what I got out of it. And that's what matters, at least for me. So, uh, <sighs> that wraps up the 2020 game of the year for me, basically. Uh, a lot of great titles this year. A lot of them. And, hey, feel free to share your own list of, game of games of the year with me. Go right ahead. I, I'm cool to listen. I wouldn't mind hearing your thoughts and reasons why so-and-so is uh, your game of the year or your top five favorites. I won't belittle you and no way in the comments should. Let's keep it civil, guys. Come on. It's just something so simple. It's entertainment. It's not devalue one another over this. There's no reason to create a war over it. Uh, simply put, let's just all get along and let's hope that 2021 let's make a good new year and let's hope for some great new games, movies, everything and let's keep dealing with COVID each day at a time and hopefully overcome everything. Let's all work together and make the best future that we can. So, without further ado, Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a, a great end of the year and a great next year. And may all your dreams and resolutions come true, please. So, until next time, everyone. Take care.